there, I'm Bailey and welcome to my channel where we discuss all the tips and tricks necessary for you to live a life of adventure. I'm assuming you've clicked on this video because you're interested in through hiking the Great Divide Trail and are wondering what things you should consider when planning your trip. Now, luckily for you, I through hiked the Great Divide Trail back in 2019 and really learned a whole bunch. I want to share some of the things that we had to consider that were different than planning any other through hike. I've through hiked the Colorado Trail as well as my own route, and I've done a lot of research and read a lot about other long distance trails like the AT and the PCT. And there's a lot of things that are very different about the GDT. So I want to make sure to share some of those things such as resupply, getting to the termini, um, park permits are big ones and more so that other people can have an easier time dealing with the logistical nightmare that is GDT. So I really encourage you to watch all the way through until the end. I also want to let you know that this is going to be kind of like an overview and if you're interested in seeing more in-depth videos on each of these topics then you might want to consider subscribing to my channel. Alright so the first thing we're going to go ahead and talk about is the Termini. So because the Great Divide Trail is in Canada if you are an American hiker or obviously you're a European hiker this could be a little bit challenging for you to get there as you'll have to deal with border crossings. Even if you're Canadian though, there's also going to be some interesting challenges just due to the remoteness of the different trailheads. So the Southern Termini is located on the US Canadian border at the Goat Hunt entry, which is on the border of Waterton Lakes National Park and Glacier National Park. So if you are coming from the US, maybe you would wanna consider taking the Amtrak train to East Glacier and either hitching to Waterton or um, do some sort of approach either from East Glacier or Hitch to like Many Glacier or something and then hike in that way. If you come in from the Canada side, then you're going to have to hike back and tag the border and keep going. So keep that in mind. You could also fly into Calgary and either take like an Uber or Hitch or find a Trail Angel to get you to Waterton Lakes National Park as well. And I've also heard of some hikers driving and planning to leave their vehicle at Waterton. So that's something you could consider as well. There are three Northern Termini for you to choose from essentially. If you are starting or ending at Jasper, then that is actually going to be the easiest termini out of the four that you can choose from total on the trip. So that's where Quill and I, who I hiked the GDT with, that's where we ended up ending. And it was really nice because there's actually a bus that goes from Edmonton where there's an international airport to Jasper and vice versa, or you can do what we did and hitchhike. And that actually was pretty easy for us to do because it's a straight shot on the highway. The current official Northern Termini for the GDT is at Mount Robson. And so once you hike back out to the visitor center, that's also on the main highway. So it's a pretty easy thing to hitch from there back to Jasper. And then you could take the bus or hitch from there. So that one's also not too horrible other than the approach in from the visitor center to the lake. And then the last option would be Cockle Lakes Provincial Park, which is definitely the most remote. And you do need to know that if you plan to go all the way to Cockwa, then there's either going to be a two mile road walk out, or you might want to consider going Sobo or flipping up from Jasper and hiking in. So that way you can get a ride all the way to the park without having to deal with that two day road walk. So the second thing you should consider for your GDT through hike would be your town stops. So there's a lot of really great town stops on the GDT that are super fun and interesting and really a lot different than in the US. Waterton is a great place to stop. Coleman is right on the trail and Blairmore is right next door. That's between section A and B. You know, Saskatchewan Crossing is right on the trail, but there's some things to consider. A lot of these places are really big tourist hotspots, which means that A, they're really expensive and B, that it can be very, very hard to find lodging during the high season. So Quill and I were very, 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 very lucky because when we stopped in Banff, we were able to stay with the Trail Angel, but in both Banff and Jasper, a lot of hikers really struggle to find a place to stay because the hostels are full, the campgrounds have been full a lot or closed, the hotels are full or really pricey or pricey and full. So you wanna take that into consideration beforehand and you may want to consider actually making your reservations ahead of time. And the reason why I say that anyways is because of tip number three, which is your park permits. So unlike the Continental Divide Trail, unlike the Colorado Trail, unlike any other trail really other than maybe the PCT, the GDT has a ridiculous number of permits. It's basically a trail where they have taken the crown jewels of the Canadian Rockies, aka the national parks, and strung them together with other random trail in between. Because of this and because of the fact that the GDT is a relatively new trail, 
there is no through hiker permit, which means that when you through hike the GDT, you need to get backcountry reservations for the popular campsites up to six months ahead of time, essentially individually. You can't just like get one permit to go. There are some areas where you get pack, like a backcountry permit and then you can camp, but there's also a lot of campgrounds that you have to reserve individual sites, such as the Rock Wallet Trail in Banff and the Skyline Trail in Jasper National Park. And I will make a video that goes more in depth and the GDTA also has planning resources on their website and I will be sure to link that down in the description below. So the fourth thing you should consider would be your resupplies. Now I will say this wasn't actually too bad. There's quite a few places on the trail where you can resupply that are a little bit limited and difficult, but you could do it if you really had to. But most of the trail you could actually do without sending any boxes. Really what I would do would be to consider sending a box to the Peter Lougheed Visitor Center and to Saskatchewan Crossings. And if you're planning on going all the way to Kakwa, then I would also consider sending a box to the Mount Robson Visitor Center. But other than that, all the other towns have full resupplies, even the towns in the National Park. Sometimes they're a bit expensive, like resupplying in Waterton was pretty hefty as far as price goes, but they had everything that you could need. And I will say too that if you have a limited diet, there's a fair amount of options. My hiking buddy Quill is vegan and she was able to resupply on the whole trail just fine. And most of the food is also very similar to the US if that's what you're used to. There's a little bit of differences as far as things you could find. There weren't like flavored tuna packets in Canada, which is really disappointing for me, but you can supplement that with other options. All right, and the fifth thing you should consider is your backcountry skills and if you are ready to deal with how rugged the trail is. So one of the allures of the Great Divide Trail is that it's very wild. You know, I see a lot of people posting that it's hashtag the wildest through hike, right? Like it's super cool and it's super beautiful and it really pushed me to grow a lot as a hiker. But you need to know before you go into this hike whether you have the skills necessary or not or whether you should maybe consider hiking with someone else or not or work on some skills and take some classes. And that's because there are a lot of sections where you will have to navigate off trail, which isn't a huge deal because the Gut Hooks app has been out for several years now, so you can use that. But you're also going to be having to do some bushwhacking at some point, no matter what. You're going to have to deal with crossing glacial fed river, which can be very dangerous if you don't know how to do it safely. You'll have to deal with the fact that you're hiking in grizzly bear country the whole entire time. So making sure that you know what to do with your food and how to take proper grizzly bear precautions. And if you want to know more about hiking in grizzly country, I do have a video on that that you can check out up here. Those are all just a few of the things, right? And I will say too, when I hiked the GDT in 2019, we also had to deal with a lot of inclement weather just because Canada, you know, is that much further north than the rest of the US. It's that much wetter than the rest of the Rockies below it. And so we got snowed on, we had to deal with a lot of rain, which made the rivers flow very fast, it was very cold, even in July. So do keep all those things in mind before planning your hike. I met several very experienced hikers, including Brazil Nut and Hyrobics. You know, they're both triple crowners times extra, and they said that this was the most difficult through hike that they had completed to date. So do keep that in mind. It's very alluring, right? It will push you, but you wanna make sure that you stay safe as well. So that's all I have for today. Again, if you wanna know more about hiking in grizzly country and what that entails, I would encourage you to go watch my grizzly bear video next. But otherwise, be sure to stay tuned. If you have something you wanna add um, because you've hiked the Great Divide Trail, let me know down in the comments. Or if you have specific questions about hiking the Great Divide Trail, I would love to answer your questions. I will also link some articles I wrote about the Great Divide Trail with some pictures if you want to check that out along with the GDTA website in the description as well. But other than that, I hope you guys have happy trails. Go watch that grizzly bear video and I'll see you later.